Welcome to another episode of the Black Eskimo Podcast. My special guest today is Havaya Mighty. Now, Havaya, which I initially thought was Havia, the story goes she was born in Toronto, raised in Brampton. Now, Brampton is essentially a suburb of Toronto. Uh, who, who's famous out of Brampton? Um, Michael Cera. Michael Cera, the actor. A ton of movies. I don't even need to mention the movies he's been in. Uh, Little X, famous video director. He's gone on to do videos with, you name it. I mean, psh, it's too many people to even mention. Jadakiss, Jay-Z, on and on and on and on. I mean, Drake, all kinds of people. So Brampton's produced some some uh, some names uh, who made some made some impact in the game. In any event, uh, here's my interview with Hovaya. We spoke um, last week. And uh, she's a bright one. She's a bright one. I like to see that. I like to see this generation representing intelligence. So check it out and stay tuned and I'll catch you next Monday. Yeah, more recently, uh, probably in the last week, um, I'm sure you got wind of this, uh, Jermaine Dupri, uh, founder of So So Def Records and, uh, you know, Criss Cross and The Brat and on and on and on. Uh, had made mention. Uh, I don't. I don't know if he was speaking in a in a more general sense, but he basically said that many, if not most, of uh, today's female rappers are strippers who are basically selling sex. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I clearly I don't agree with the statement, but what what are your thoughts on that? Uh, so it's funny. I, I think I only read about the statement. I didn't actually see it being said, or I don't know word for word. But I, I heard that I heard about the comment. Um, I think that it's funny that, I think it is funny that somebody who is so familiar with the culture and so ingrained in the culture could make a statement, you know, that kind of like, I feel like it's like willingly ignorant, like we, like... I feel like he's in the best position to know the reason why his statement is not only not true, but also, like, what we see in the mainstream, because essentially, I guess what his statement was trying to say was was that all, 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 all females that are participating in the culture are basically pushing stripper culture. That's what, that's what I got from it. Right. Well, I, I mean, I... Okay, well, I, I, in all fairness, though, I, I don't really see Jermaine Dupri as a hip-hop person. He's someone who's definitely capitalized on the mainstream movement of the culture from the 90s on, where he's, he's really someone who, continue, who contributed to uh, ushering in a more mainstream approach to the music. But I think also, in this day and age, to kind of cut through the noise, you got to create clickbait, though. And I think, I think that comment is clickbait, though. I really do. I think it... I, I, I definitely think the majority of, like, things that people say is, is oftentimes like they, and I do think that there's a strong potential that it is. But I guess for me, as somebody who's born in 92, right. I've been seeing Jermaine Dupri uh, in, involved in hip-hop since I was exposed to him. Right on. Obviously, when you, right? So obviously, when you back then, he's not in all of the clips, but he's been present sure. in, in so much of my journey. Like, he's been there. Sure. And so, I feel like if I, if for me to be aware, I can only be aware from 92 and onward. Like, there's no way that you cannot be aware that there are definitely female talent that is not talking about what you're talking about, Mm -hmm. that you are not seeking. Like, why are we pretending that? Like, this is not somebody that doesn't know how to speak their own music. This is a person who, like, tried to uh, invent his own company based on the concept of finding new musicians. He's supposed to be this innovator of finding new sounds, and then you come up with a statement like that, which is really only related to and talking about very few females in, 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 in a small mainstream pool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, like I, I, there's supposed to be this cutting edge. This is just like, you're contradicting what you say you are. Not even so much like what I think you are. It's just, this is what you've been showing me. This is what you've been trying to say you are. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, male, male rappers or males in the industry, in the hip-hop industry, you know, oftentimes are very comfortable mm-hmm. um, and, and saying whatever they, they think. And I think, I think, I, I mean, I, I try to look at the positive. <laughs> like, I'm a Libra moon. I try to see, like, the equality side. Like, what, what is the positive version of what he could have meant, you know? Right. And I feel maybe the statement is so unfair because as somebody who is 
an executive in the way that he is. Like, this is somebody who can actually effectively make the change that he's pretending to be seeking. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it comes from. Like, you're not actually seeking the change because you're one of those people who could at least try to take steps towards that. You don't actually have any invested interest in that. You don't actually care. So, yeah, the statement must be clickbait because for you to feel... For you to make a statement as bold as that is if you have such a, such a, such a strong opinion. Like, mm-hmm. you really probably could care less. So I, 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 I just think sometimes people just talk too much. They just talk too much. They just say too much. Or they didn't think it through enough. Um, and I think, you know, it, it would be simple. It would be easy just to do a little bit of research and recognize, like, and I'm not even talking about myself, that there are a lot of artists that are talking about a lot of different things. Like, it's such a saturated market now in 2019. Uh, and there's there's access to all of these different styles of music. And I think, you know, uh, I think Jermaine Dupree, if he were really to take the time to sit down and, like, think the statement through, maybe he spoke too quickly. But I think even he knows uh, uh, the, the part of the statement that is, is that is not true and that women that are participating in the pop are doing that. I think that he knows that he is able to take the time to think about it, but that is not a true statement uh, and that is a statement out of ignorance. And so I, 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 I personally just think that it's, like, it's not even a question. Like It's just the fact is that that isn't true. You just have to dig deeper. I agree. I agree. Uh, but speaking of women uh, or female MCs, um, and I'm going to keep in mind that you are younger. Uh, I'm, I'm quite a bit older than you. And I go back. I go. I go back to a different time when hip hop was uh, different, different culturally in terms of integrity, artistry. But what what's your take on, or do you have a take on Nishi Me and what she means to you? Really being, uh, I would say the first, maybe not the first female MC out of Toronto, but really the most significant that I can think of going back to the eighties. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I would say, I mean, like, again, my take would be definitely uh, a little less experienced than yours, but Nishi Mia is, is a pioneer. Mm-hmm. She's a pioneer. She's a pioneer in Canadian hip-hop, period. I've had the pleasure of uh, sharing the stage with her a few times and, 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 and having her on tour with, with uh, me and the sorority. Oh, really? So she's, yeah, we, oh. we had her on one date. I think it was Calgary, or I might be mixing the data, but one of the dates that we did, uh, Nishi Mia did a slot for us. She also played at our release party. Uh, or our, like, big Toronto show. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then she had us perform, like, before we became the sorority, she actually uh, had us perform at her birthday bash two years in a row. So I think her first birthday bash was, like, the start of, like, the sorority talk. It was like, wow, maybe we should, you know, make this a thing. So that was pretty cool because I feel, you know, as a pioneer and as, you know, four young female rappers at the time, you're looking at a pioneer who's recognizing you and, and realizing how much further you can take it than just the Cypher video or just these three performances. So it was really cool to have that. And she's just, she's just an inspiration. Like, she's, we, we talked game, we chopped it up, and she, she is so supportive of uh, the younger females that are in the game. And, like, she's just so, so, so good energy. I don't know how to explain it, you know. She just, but... Yeah, she's definitely a pioneer. I think, you know, she's a pioneer in, in bridging multiple genres and, and, and bridging multiple sounds, also bringing in the Jamaican sound uh, in, in I guess, in a Canadian realm, a mainstream, right? And, like, that's something that I find that I do. There's an amalgamation of sounds on my music or in my music, uh, different dialects that are used uh, and different types of chord progressions, different types of vibes, different energies. Uh, and I feel like she's an artist that was, that was doing that and... and to be a female and to be doing that so early in the game, um, it's definitely an inspiration to me. Good to hear. Good to hear. Because I, I think I look at her now, and she's still acknowledged, but Nishi Me was a very big deal when I was coming up. When I think about the fact that she was making moves in America with uh, Karis Wan, with Queen Latifah, and on and on and on, she was making some major moves. I mean, she was the first person out of Toronto, even before Maestro, who was out there doing things internationally. So mm-hmm. definitely got to tip my hat to her, but I'm glad that you're connected to her in that way. That's a nice thing. Yeah, um, but I would love to work with her. Okay, like do a record with her. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm going to kind of kind of jump into something a little more humorous. Um, how do you deal with male groupies? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm exercising different methods still. Um, I'd say the main the main realm that you see that for me at the level that I'm at is Instagram. I don't know 
some people get at you at shows, but I actually think that more female group is live. Oh. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, like in a live setting, like females, I guess, are way more, have a tendency to like just kind of like touch you and do stuff like that. Ah. Like just, just hug you, you know what I mean? Like a guy will, you know, because there's still, there's still 2019, we got the new culture, it's kind of like, can I have a hug? Girls will just hug you, like they don't have, they don't need your permission, right? But, right. Uh, male groupies, I find more so like, in a digital realm because they can kind of just shoot their shot and they don't have to think too hard about like whether this is like offensive or like they're not touching right so okay you, you gotta yeah. t- you gotta tell me some more of the more I guess a little more of the extreme or outlandish examples of, of what they do digitally so what, what what kind of DM mess what kind of DM messages are you getting now <laughs> um there's obviously be like irregular pictures that you could ask for like that oh like, no really Really? That's like an irregularity. Like that's happened maybe. Okay. Yeah. No, because I had I had a friend um, who went to university in Toronto. I went to university as well, but she told me that a guy she'd met in one of her classes sent her one of those pics, one of those pics of his member, and I thought, really? That's how you get it. That's how you get a girl. It's definitely not. Uh, I've, I've actually had more people airdrop me them in public randomly than an actual groupie, which is disgusting. I don't, I, I don't know. It's like a joke or a troll thing now, but um, I guess when guys are actually trying to hover, like they're actually trying to make a, a statement, I find more so the more outlandish ones, I guess, are the ones that... I'm a, I'm a nice person, so I try I try to respond to everybody on Instagram. So unless it's like, if it's outwardly offensive, it's the only way I just won't reply. If it's unintentionally offensive, I'll probably still reply, like, as, as, as of right now, right? So, if someone's trying to holler, like, I've had someone try to, like, reach out and, like, it's kind of, like, forward, like, I'd like to take you out, I'd like to do this, or whatever it is, and you just kind of say, like, I'm good, but thank you, like, I'm not going to give you a reason or whatever, but, like, I'm, I'm good, but thank you. I, the outlandish ones are, like, the ones that, like, get upset and, like, have negative things to say after, like, ask you or when them follow you or, like, your music is this or like I never I had I had this one guy I guess this is less of a hollering thing but I had this one guy who uh I know through another artist and she's a female artist right and, um I know him through this artist but I don't know him at all like I, I just know that he's affiliated with this other artist anyways he's shown the like interest in my career for years and years and years um, but just digitally, he doesn't, he doesn't even live in the country. I have no idea who he is. I don't know what he looks like. Mm-hmm. It's just this, 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 this handle, right? Right. And um, I guess we hadn't communicated in, in two years. Like, there was very little communication to begin with, but there was, like, an Instagram follow, and then there was no communication, right? And his page is not even, like, it's not even any content. It's, like, mountains and stuff. Like, I don't know who this guy is. Mm-hmm. So I started a following account two years later, so, like, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I want inspiring content. When I scroll down my feed, I want to see stuff that, like, I like. So I guess I unfollowed this account because all I saw was about him. And so he hit me up and was like, yo, why did you unfollow? Uh-oh. And I guess, yeah, yeah, he, like, even though we didn't talk to you, he noticed the day, the hour that I unfollowed him. And then, like, he let maybe three hours pass, and I guess I didn't respond fast enough. Mm-hmm. And then he just dropped this whole, like, this whole thing of insults, how such and such, so-and-so was a better artist than you. Oh, no. And stuff. And, like, I was going to get you on this tour in Europe, but now that's not going to happen. Uh-oh. You're garbage. You're not even attractive. This and that, like, insulting the way that I look. And oh, no. It was crazy. It that's was crazy. not nice. That's not nice. It was crazy. That's was not crazy. nice. And then recently messaged me, and then recently messaged me back, uh, like, I want to say this week or something, just say, hey, I just saw these messages and somebody had asked my account. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the excuse. <laughs> was like, I'm so sorry that you had to read that, that, but that was someone else. And, blah, blah, blah. and I'm just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I got to ask yeah. that. I mean, I, you, you don't have to answer this question, but you're kind of messing around with it in the sense that what does it take to get access to you in that way? So forget about the professional booking you on tours or collaborating with you. What if, what if a dude sees you? I mean, here's the thing. I don't know your orientation, but let's say somebody sees you and they want to get with you. Is there a possibility? Is there is there a, is there a, a mode of is there a particular approach required on your end or on their end? I would. I, I can't say there's a particular approach. I mean, I think that there's obviously approaches that that will work on me and. 
I, I, that could be like a long list, but yeah, okay. no, I definitely would be, I definitely would be open to the idea of somebody, but like, you will just, you will know, you will know, <laughs> like, you know, like, and so if you shoot your shot, I, you'll know, I will let you know whether it is or isn't a thing. <laughs> okay. And then, it's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm definitely, I'm single, so I'm open to meeting people. Right. But... Yeah, I would say the, the, the approach is I, I am a complex person. I'm, I'm a business-oriented person. My career comes first. Okay. Um, and then, you know, for, for the most part, that is why I'm single. I'm just so focused on, you know, the things that i got to do and the goals I set for myself right now. Like, I'm really young right now, and I know that there's time and room for a relationship. Uh, but uh, I'm not closed off to the idea of a relationship. Um, there would just You would just need to give me an, an added element, like, to my life, like, because I've got a lot going on already, and I think the approach would just be, like, what are you adding, like, it's just, surface level's probably not going to work, because we could just be friends, and do those surface level things, um, yeah, and you just got to, you just have to add something to, to an already pretty hectic life that would make me feel like I need to make time for that thing. That's fair, that's fair, okay, yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate the answer, um, and finally, I find that rappers today seem very fixated on fame fame and popularity in the sense that um, the music has really changed and we, we started off um, well earlier in, in the interview talking about Jermaine Dupri and I think that there is a clear distinction between rap and hip hop I think hip hop is really the culture it is really a more uh, integrity based representation where I think rap is just more sell records popularity tour the world make a bunch of money um, what's your take on that this idea that I feel I mean it's just it's just how I see it I see. I feel that rappers of today are largely, they seem largely more fixated on fame and fortune than artistic integrity. What do you think? I 100% agree. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you, you nailed it. I think that that's kind of the biggest focus. I think that, you know, like, cloud is a huge thing. I think that there's certain steps that you can take towards reaching that, and that's why so many people are willing to do those things because it's not about the artistic merit. And I know, like, I'm not sitting on uh, facial tattoos. I think that they can be cool when intentional. But yeah, like I think that there's just a certain thing. You can just pat your face and, and you know, make songs about certain things and kind of reach out to certain producers. And it's just like this, like, this game plan that you can follow. And you know, as long as you kind of follow those steps, you'll, you'll probably get, you know, at least a little bit of distance. You'll get a little bit of wind, a little bit of gas. Um, I... I really struggle, or oh, I struggled with that for a long time because I always thought that if I just did this or if I just did that when I was younger, that things moved, could happen faster for me because my moral code never really allowed that to be a thing. And I always kind of struggled in balance or struggled to find the balance of, you know, what content is fair for me to talk about and when is it too much, when is it too controversial, when is it too, you know what I mean? Because, like, I, I have this natural natural craving to speak on like these like really raw topics but then I'm born in the era where like you don't talk about raw topics you talk about fun stuff or sex stuff or violence but you don't talk about raw you know so it's, I, I've, I've kind of been in the middle of like trying to appease the fan base that wants to hear that new school stuff and like that's the thing I'm also born in that era so there's something that I I've learned to appreciate elements of you know kind of like you know like fast food music like right quick you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I have a palate, I have a palate for it. Because I'm born in this era, and I've been exposed to it so much, that there's the, the element that I appreciate in it, like, I, I can name a handful of songs that I know could fall into that category that I love. Mm -hmm. You know, but then there's also the same, I have that exact same uh, feeling for, like, conscious records that actually have a lot of lyrical content, raw or not, and, like, the approach is obviously so different, and it's much less of, like, that rap element that you're speaking about, mm -hmm. and then, so, me as an artist, I feel I'm kind of caught in the middle, because I'm just exposed to, I've been exposed to, and I'm influenced by both of these things, and so, I feel that that actually comes out of my sound, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so focused on the artistic merit, I'm involved in the production process of my album, I... I think that, you know, even beyond the lyrical approach and the lyrical content and the themes and, and all of that, like the visuals are just as important and the, you know, the message is just as important and the production, the sonic elements infused 
uh, within the listening experience, I think all of that stuff is so important. I'm so focused on the art first. That, like, for me, I know I'll never really fall into that. Uh, I try not to judge too much because this, you know, it's a small industry and we'll be working with many different people that have many different things to offer. But my focus uh, and my approach, you know, I I think artistic merit comes first. Like, I'm a musician first. Um, you know, and maybe for some people, rapping is a medium, but they, you know, their their love or their passion is not maybe that first, like mm-hmm. creating music first. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's like a secondary element of like their what they want to do. Uh, but for me, music is first. I'm a musician first. Right? And I'm an MC. I produce. I DJ. I, I'm so infused in the creation of sound that for me, the art is always first. Sounds good. I, I appreciate your time, and, and you're a bright soul. I like that. It's nice to see an MC within the context of these times with intelligence and focus. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So I'll definitely be in contact, but thanks for your time, and I wish you all the best. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.